Tyler was about four years old when his mother told me that his daycare suggested ADHD medication for his behavior. When Tyler was first placed on the medication, the doctor gave him 10 milligrams of Adderall. It seemed that the medication wasn't working. He wasn't doing any better in school, so they decided that they wanted to continue to increase the dosage. He went from 10 milligrams to 30 milligrams extended release in just two years' time. When Tyler came into my full-time care at six years old, he wasn't the little boy I remembered. He was like in a zombie-like state. He was lethargic, with withdrawn. Couldn't even tell me how his day went. While on the medication, Tyler experienced other side effects like headaches. He went to the clinic so often that I thought he was faking it. But then I got a call from the school telling me that Tyler had an incident. They told me that Tyler was on the playground with another boy and told that boy that he was going to murder his family with a machine gun. At the time, I didn't know that stimulants can cause psychotic behavior, and I didn't connect the dots. Tyler also had gastrointestinal side effects that got so bad that I decided to get him off that medication again. I talked to Tyler, and he told me he didn't like the medication. He didn't like the way it made him feel. He asked me if he could stop the medication, and I told him I would do my best to try. Immediately, I decided to take him off the medication. Over that summer, I weaned him off the medication again, and the side effects went away. It took a few weeks, but he went back to his old self. Silly, laughy, playing, always having a good time. That summer, Tyler did summer school, and his grades and attitude improved off the medication. The very next year, I got Tyler started in a new school in the same school district. Everything was going very well for about a month. And then the records were transferred from the old school, and that's when the harassment started. We started getting phone calls and notes almost daily, trying to persuade us to put him back on the medication. I got a letter from the teachers telling me that I needed to come in for a parent-teacher conference. The day of the parent-teacher conference, I was greeted by five administrators. There was a guidance counselor, the vice principal, the principal, his teacher, and a DCF caseworker. When I got into the conference room, there was a child's chair that they had motioned for me to sit in. But on the other side of the desk, there were five adult chairs. I didn't think anything of it. But while sitting there and having the conference, I felt like they were talking down and looking down on me the entire time. They taunted me with phrases like, don't you want what's best for your son? Don't you care about his work performance in school? Of course I wanted what was best for him. I told them that I was opposed to the medication because of the way it made him feel and act. The DCF worker then chimed in that if I had not given him the medication that I could get in some trouble. Trouble, I thought. Were they going to take my son from me? I honestly felt threatened that if I didn't give him the medication that they might take my son from me. What was I to do? Well, I have to admit they were pretty persuasive. After that meeting, I decided that maybe the medication might be the best way to go. Decided to call his doctor and start treatment again. That's when I called his doctor and they renewed his prescription for Adderall, 30 milligrams, extended release. After Tyler got back on the medication, his gastrointestinal side effects started right back up again. I called his doctor, and that's when he told me that it was a side effect of the medication. Because Tyler was experiencing side effects with Adderall, the doctor suggested that we change him to methylphenidate, and then placed him on a 30 milligram dose. He was only 23 pills into that new medication when he died. Christmas Day 2010 was Tyler's final day. He played all day with the new toys that he had gotten, and about 4 o'clock that day he told his grandmother that he was tired and wanted to lay down for a nap. He woke up about 2 hours later at 6 o'clock, complaining of a headache. His grandmother gave him some food, he sat down and ate, but after just a little bit of time wasn't feeling well and decided he wanted to go back to sleep. And that was the last anybody heard from my son. Around midnight, Tyler's grandfather went to check on him. What he's seen will haunt him for the rest of his life. Tyler's body was cold. There was blood and mucus foamed around his mouth and his nose. His first response was to try to clear the passageway so Tyler could breathe and perform CPR while Tyler's grandmother called the 911 responders. During that time, they performed CPR and did everything they could to try to keep Tyler around. But unfortunately, Tyler had already left. The autopsy found pulmonary congestion, and the medical examiner confided in me that Tyler had an enlarged heart the size of an adult. 
I lost everything that day. And unfortunately, I thought I was doing the right thing. I trusted the doctors. I trusted the school board. I trusted everybody involved that they had my son's best interest at heart. But on the day of his funeral, none of them were in attendance. None of them came. None of them showed their condolences. None of them told me how sorry they were. I didn't see his doctor. I didn't see his teachers. All I seen was a family completely torn in half. A phrase that I heard a lot since he's been gone is that the benefits of these medications outweigh the risks. But I have to ask you, does anything outweigh the risk of losing your son's life or your daughter's life? Is anything worth that risk? So please think, please do the research, please make better decisions for your children. Because in the end, we're the only thing protecting them. It's done. Video's done. Video's done. Yeah, video's done. Come on, dude. It's not too late.